So Pope Joan is released over on the JP version of the game and she's definitely a very interesting servant. I don't think she's as broken as I wanted her to be and she's not the broken support that everybody else wanted her to be but she is still an interesting servant nonetheless. She's a hybrid support slash DPS servant. Yes, she is another AoE servant. People are clamoring for another like really strong single target servant. Don't worry, I'm sure we'll get one in like the next coming events. Maybe Anniversary will be some really good single target servant. I believe that'd be the first single target servant we've actually gotten for Anniversary. So that would actually make that really interesting. But Pope Joan again, very interesting servant. Very excited to talk about her in today's video. But before we begin, as usual, if you have not already, make sure you leave a like on the video and you subscribe to the channel for that sweet daily FGO content. I usually try to keep you guys up to date on everything that's going on with both versions of the game, whether it be NA or JP. Although this Pope Joan video is a day late because I got a little bit bamboozled by the time zones. For some reason, I thought she was coming out today and not yesterday. So I apologize for that for anybody that was like, man, I want to summon right now. Where's the video? Well, it's here now. Okay, I rectified my mistake by putting it out today. Also, don't forget to peep those links in the description down below because I stream every weekday over on my Twitch starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if you want to see me play FGO Live or you got questions, you want to just generally talk to me about something, feel free to pop in there whenever I am live. But with all that being said, let's start talking about Pope Joan starting off with her hits. And her hits are definitely very interesting. Uh, more so looking at the NP where she has three hits over there on an AoE Arts NP with only 0.55% NP gain. That definitely does mean that at least on her own, she would have trouble looping her NP, but thankfully Castoria is such a broken servant that as long as you've got a pulse and a multi-hit arts NP, you're going to be able to loop all over the place, especially because Pope Joan kind of has that same ability that Zenobia has, where she's able to kind of brute force her way through farming nodes just because she gets so much NP back. So if you were wanting to use her for farming because you think she's cute or something, don't worry, you could still get the job done with her. The only passive skill here that you really want to pay attention to would probably be that passive 10% arts buff because that's going to be a little more important when we start talking about her second skill. And I guess if you think it's relevant, she does have a 25% debuff resistance thing because she is a ruler, so she has that mad magic resistance. But overall, I think a lot of the power for Pope Joan does come from her skills and her NP. Go figure. So starting off with her first skill, this is a really interesting skill for her to have because this can allow her to pivot from being a support to the main DPS. Because what it's doing is it's going to give one ally insane art star weight and then insane 100% arts crit damage both for three turns on a six turn cooldown while also providing 10 stars per turn for those same three turns. So in theory, if you had like two 2030s on like say your Pope Joan and like a Castoria and you were supporting someone like Astrea or I don't know, even Saber Lance a lot, right? Just pick some random art servant, right? Not only do you have the stars that they could provide, but between the three of them, you could be refunding 30 stars per turn from her 10 and the double 20 30s. Then again, in this scenario, they are maximum broken because, you know, it's just easier for rounded numbers. But you're getting what I'm saying that you could start turning your art setups into like quick setups really easily. I know quick players in shambles yet again. This is the release of 2030 all over again in year one. But you're getting what I'm saying that like this definitely could have some very interesting applications in art setups because again you don't have to use her as the main dps person you could bring double castoria with her use her for farming or just have them both supporting her while also kind of providing stars themselves with i don't know 20 30 or whatever you want to slap on the castorias or maybe you're just going to rely on pope jones for a skill but it's definitely really nice because if you're going to use her as a support she can just make somebody go super saiyan 3 for three turns because 100 percent arts crit damage is not bad that's the same as like scotty's quick crit damage and that's why scotty teams were able to just burst things down in three turns it was like oh we ran out of np well what if i just smacked you with these insane quick crits so already starting off she's got a very very strong skill especially because as well i just love the fact that she's targeting the arts card star weight specifically because that's going to make it easier for your guys to loop their np because if you have like all of your stars going to like a random buster card and like i don't really need a buster crit right now i need an arts crit to really refund some more np that can just be really really nice for those art setups so already i think it's very nice then we move over to her second skill this is just giving a whole smorgasbord of good effects to your art setups because if you think about it, she's giving some extra stuff that, say, a Castoria team wouldn't already provide for you. Now, she is giving 20% arts performance to the entire party for three turns. Castoria already does give massive arts to one person, but this is still 
very nice because everybody in that team can take advantage of that, right? Castoria even could take advantage of the arts buff that she'll be getting because in a way it's going to buff the NP gain of her arts cards, making it easier for her to get to her own NP. Also remember that because of Joan's passive 10%, this is really a 30% arts buff for herself, but 20% for everybody else. So don't forget about the passive, but then it's nice that she's giving the one instance of debuff immunity to the entire party for one time. And then also giving them a thousand damage cut for three turns as well, while also giving herself a 30% battery. The reason this is nice is that in art setups, the way you kind of deal with debuffs is through Castoria's own NP where she debuff cleanses everything. But this kind of lets you fight debuffs on both fronts. You can just hit them before they even hit your party, and then you can also get rid of them on Castoria's own NP, and it also lets you get rid of them on an NP and a skill, which is really, really nice, because now you're hitting it from two different fronts, but you also have it on a skill and an NP, so it can be kind of doubly available for your party. And then the damage cut is really nice, because if you're just using double Castoria, you're kind of fighting a war of attrition, because you really have no sustain. It's not like a Merlin comp, where you get HP every single turn, or Lady Avalon, who gives you max HP. It's not like those setups. It's kind of like once you take damage in those setups, You've already lost that HP because Castoria is not going to give it back to you. So this in a way makes you even tankier and it makes it even easier for you to fight that War of Attrition in those double Castoria setups specifically. And so I just think it's a very nice support skill for the entire party that really benefits everyone in those team comps, right? Whether you're using even like Tamamo, right? You want to bring Lady Avalon, just these other art supports. It just synergizes very well. Then finally, we have her third skill. This one's kind of nuts because it's giving the entire party 20% NP every single turn for three turns, and it's giving everybody a 20% attack buff for three turns on an eight turn cooldown. Yeah, I understand what this is on an eight turn cooldown because this is insane. This is what I mean by the fact that like, yeah, her hits are low and her natural NP gain isn't super high, but dude, she's gonna be able to brute force her way through nodes because of the fact that she's just going to give herself a Zenobia-like effect where she just gives herself fat globs of NP every single turn. But then not only that, the entire party's getting it. The thing that I just said about, oh yeah, Castori can use the arts buff to help get to her NP. Well, she's also going to be getting 20% every single turn, making everything I said about having the, you know, debuff immunity, if you're worried about that, available on a skill and an NP even easier because you're getting NP every single turn. And then if you're doing like a hybrid setup, or let's say you're doing a Pope Joan, a Castoria, and then Melusine, for instance, or let's just say Melusine, it's going to make it even easier for someone like Melusine to get to their NP if they were already struggling enough. I get it, right? Melusine may be a bad example because she just stacks NP gain, but you get what I'm saying. It's going to be easier for them to get to their own NP. And they're also getting double buffed, right? Because they're getting the arts and the attack buff. And not only that, but Pope Joan is double buffing herself. Now, Granted, she kind of needs to double buff herself because her damage isn't super high, her attack stat is quite low, but she kind of sacrifices that for being a ruler, which is a very naturally tanky class because they pretty much resist everything with insane naturally high HP. It's just really nice. It makes her a very nice support servant that's just going to stick around for a long time, and it's just going to be giving really nice buffs to the entire party. And then if you look at her NP, I mean, it's really nice because she has double damage mod. She has a 50% special damage mod against evil, and then she has a 150 against man. Both of those are pretty solid damage mods. Again, keep in mind that evil could be like chaotic evil, neutral evil, lawful evil, anything like that. And man is a pretty good special damage mod to have. You can also double stack these together. If you're fighting an evil man attribute person, she actually will start to do really insane damage. But you really do want to pick those battles where you know that you're going to be fighting one of those two, because if you're not going up against Evil or Man, her damage can look really, really bad. But again, you just got to be kind of smart on when you use her as an actual DPS versus a support. So let's say you're going to bring her to a boss, right? And you want her to be like more of a support. They're not Evil or Man. Doesn't matter. Instead, you can shift the focus to another DPS and let them handle the boss, and she can just have more of a supportive role. But even then, her NP hits the enemy with one of my favorite effects in the game, buff block. So even if she is not, you know, being your main DPS, because whatever main villain person you're fighting doesn't have evil or man, she is still going to deny them their buffs, which is insane. Again, if you've ever done the Chi Shi Huang fight with Jalter, you know, it is two completely different fights. You either are fighting him with Jalter, where it is a complete cakewalk because you don't allow him to do anything, or you actually find out that this guy can do 8 billion damage on a crit. <laughs> 
So yeah, I think Pope Joan is really, really strong. I don't think she's quite that like new Castoria or the insane new Arts Lupert or rival Kukul Khan, right? Like, I don't think she's anything like that, but she's definitely not a bad servant. She's definitely really, really strong. Like, if you were saving up for this servant because you were like, oh, I really want to see what she does, and you're like, man, I'm kind of in need of an arts, you know, looping servant or just like another arts support type servant, she's definitely a really solid guy to go for. Keep in mind, she's going to have a bit of a different role, though. Like, if you need somebody specifically for, let's say you just need extra batteries on your account, you're like, okay, I have Waver who gives me like 50%. I have Castoria who gives me 50%. I need another servant to give me a lot of NP. Keep in mind that with Pope Joan, you're going to be getting NP over time. It's not one of those immediate things you can use for certain setups for like farming and whatnot. But if you don't really care about that or you don't really need that, then all the better, right? Just all the better for you actually going for her. Uh, I think she's really strong. If you want to go ahead and summon for her, I think that's absolutely fine. I do think though that JP players should be a bit wary because again, they did announce that they were going to be doing that FGO arcade like collaboration thing, right? And that's what I'm personally saving my Saint Courts for over on the JP version, right? While I do think that Kukul Khan is really good, and I did get her on the other JP account. I recently got my main one back. If you guys didn't you know, hear about that on like stream or anything, I did manage to get it back finally after like a month. But so on that account, I'm kind of holding out for the collaboration event because I almost feel, and you could call me like maybe a conspiracy theorist for it, right? But I'm like, they put out Kukul Khan, who's like this new age, like buster OP dummy nutty looping servant, right? Just stupid insane, almost feels like power creep. And then you have Joan, who I wouldn't say is like power creep, but she's definitely, you can tell like this is a current year servant. This servant is very, very strong. I'm almost like, how good are these arcade servants going to be? Like, are they going to drop Tiamat and she's like definitively like the best servant in the game? Is she going to be like quick Arcoid? Is she going to be the arts version of Kukul Khan? Like, what is she going to do, right? So that's why I'm kind of holding out a little bit. I'm like, you know what? Skipping Pope Joan, that gives me more time on JP to save my Saint Quartz, see what's going on with this collaboration event. If we didn't have that announced, I'd probably be more apt to summon for Pope John because I would be really excited to have her in my box so I could kind of test out certain setups. But I think I'll be just fine continuing to bring her as a friend servant into like some of my setups and whatnot and just kind of testing her out that way. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you going to be summoning for Pope Joan or are you just going to be holding out waiting for the arcade collaboration? Because who knows what they're going to do for the collaboration. I am eagerly awaiting with bated breath for that collaboration to see what we get. But with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have yourselves a nice day. Peace. Late, guys.